now. I am ghost. It's a ghost. <laughs> it's the wind. Hello there, humans. I am Dulce Silbruno. I'm a partially blind writer. And today I'm going to talk about Camp Danoraimo and all that stuff that I'm planning to do for Camp Danoraimo because it's my first Camp Danoraimo. <laughs> I am acting so ridiculous today. What the crap? Anyway, I'm excited. I am excited because it is my first Camp Danoraimo and I'm going to have daily updates on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram. It's the same name, Dulce Silbruno. I'm the same everywhere. <laughs> and Twitter as well. Anyway, I'm going to try to do a daily update for Instagram. I already prepared my daily graphics and stuff. But then I also joined a cabin with other writers and other tubers. Thank you very much for the invitation because otherwise I wouldn't have known where could I just join. I am too shy, so yeah, <laughs> I was invited. Thank you very much um, to all the crew with uh, Story Detective, Burger Rights, um, Sio Savi, all of you, all of you, thank you very much for making that cabin awesome. We are planning on doing some sprints. I don't think I'm gonna host them in my channel. I think it's gonna be with uh, Story Detective. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's gonna be like on YouTube. I still don't know. We are coordinating time zones because in this cabin, everyone is in a different time zone. Like, there is someone with Alaska time, there are someone with Eastern European time, uh, there's someone with Central European time, there is someone in New York, I think, with the Eastern time, there is someone with Atlantic time. I mean, we are spread across the world. We are all over the place. And we have to coordinate time zones and hopefully we will join for multiple riding sprints during Camp NaNoWriMo. So what is my situation with Camp Nano? As I said in a few other videos, I am working on the second book of the Strange Families trilogy and I think I am on the final push. I am stuck in a chapter. As the time of recording this video, it's end of June, we are closer and closer to going to this camp nano. I think we are two days away. Yeah, we're two days away. Oh my god. And um, I am stuck on chapter 23. Um, I'm working on finishing it because I want to start with chapter 24 as soon as we hit Camp Nano. And it is a very tedious chapter to write. So yeah, I am struggling. And it has kept me struggling for months. So I, I'm going to use Camp Nano as a boost to finally finish the book. Um, so what is this book about? Well, Strange Families is a trilogy and I'm working on the second book, which is called The Pooling Sun and Moon. And the pulling sun and uh, so the first book was called Black Widow and Death Moth. Well, those are my working titles. I guess if I ever get traditionally published, I guess people are gonna change my titles and do a lot of things, and I don't know. But for the time being, and I love my titles, and everything has a reason, and it's very well thought out and planned, and like sketched and everything. I even have sketches of my of my dream covers so to speak it's not professional i just made it with canva and <laughs> yeah but even i even have a plan for each of the covers and everything so it, it's very well thought out so this book is called the pulling sun and moon and it's a dual pov between tibor and well i many of you know about tibor if you have watched some of my videos before um tibor is a genetically engineered boy a guy who was born in space and he was completely made in a laboratory so it's like the, the where are you from question does not does not apply to him because it's like where are you from it's like eh, well it's complicated i am um, um i am from low orbit <laughs> and yet he is human he's not an alien he's not an, anything but human um he's not anything but human he's human that's what he is and the other character in the book is this girl on Earth. Uh, she prefers to be called Lila. So Lila 
also has the skill of astral projection, but the thing is that Lila has no idea what she's doing. And things are going from bad to worse to, oh my god, I cannot even write anymore. <laughs> For all the, for, for, there are many writers who say that they kill their characters and they make them suffer and then like, oh, there's a, there's a video that I just watched recently by um, Victoria's writing secret. So shout out to Victoria and she was talking about the things that kind of annoy her as a writer and as a reader and she mentioned the writers who say they kill their characters and who say that they make them suffer and then you read the book and it's like a minor character dies and you are like yeah right okay well i am not that kind of writer i i am killing people off the page and on the page since this trilogy began like chapter one of the first book and there is already someone that there's already a mention of someone who died it's not a my. This is the thing. It's not a major character, but someone already died. Then, as things go by, other characters are going to die that maybe are minor, but the things are going to escalate, and it's going to go from minor nobodies off the page to major someone in the book. And yeah, no spoilers, but it's escalating, and <laughs> the more it escalates, the more I suffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my anyway <clears throat> people don't know if i am laughing or crying it's a mix of both <laughs> it's a nervous kind of laughter on the verge of crying <laughs> okay and yeah so tibor and lila some chapters are for him most of the chapters should be for him and some of the chapters are for her and there are chapters where they overlap and it's yeah they interact and things are very confusing right now not in the sense that i don't know how to write it i know what i'm doing with my dual pov because i have already thought out everything probably i am making mistakes because shout out to the author to community there is little to no content or very little or very general or very like mm, brief about writing in dual POV. I have seen like what, three videos about it? Three or four, minimum 10. And I haven't seen 10. I haven't watched 10 videos about writing multiple POV. I really have seen like three or four. So I am probably making mistakes. I am not saying I'm perfect, but what I am saying is I know what I'm doing for now. And I understand my story and I understand where my characters are going because I plot my stories precisely because it's a dual POV. I have to be very careful on uh, when it comes to like what what is happening when and from which point of view is this happening. And I have noticed in my own writing sometimes in these overlapping chapters that suddenly I am in the head of say Tibor and then I am narrating Lila's thoughts and I'm like oh no 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 I have to I have to cut that out because no currently we are on his head. And then, if I want to do an overlap, uh, in this overlapping chapter, if I want to change the scene and then go to her head, then at least I have a scene break. I am probably doing it wrong, but that's how I am going about it right now. Because there are chapters in which things are really happening simultaneously, and you gotta put a scene break, and then you understand that it's him, and then her, and then him, and yeah, it, there are little moments of the book when things are very much connected. And you cannot do anything about it. So it's difficult. And it, it, it is challenging, and I like to challenge myself. I think I am, I think I, I like to torture myself as a writer. So yeah, that's my project. This is what I am working on. I am really excited because I really, really want to finish the book. If book one was mild, book one wasn't mild, book one was intense. But from the trilogy, book one is like the introduction to the torture that it's coming up later. This trilogy features themes like child abuse, bullying, suicide attempts, uh, yeah, suicide and suicide attempts, um, neglect, 
uh, yeah, neglect is part of child abuse, but like, yeah, um, what else? Eh, uh, yeah, well, genetically engineering, ethics, living in, an, living in isolation in a space station, that rhymes, but it is what it is. Um, so isolation, bullying, suicide attempts and suicide and child abuse, neglect, isolation, space. Astral projection, lucid dreaming, nightmares, yeah, it's a heavy trilogy and on the bright side, it features the themes like family, friendship, love, not as, I'm not gonna say romance, because, okay, yeah, my, it might have some romantic parts, but it's not romance, it's love. It features love. That's a theme as a whole. Love as a whole. For your family, for your friends, for your heroes, people you value, people you look up to. Yeah, it, it's about family, friendship and love. Yeah, that's a bright side of it. And then, and then it features like a lot of artsy stuff like music and dancing. There is one character that I have mentioned, I think in my previous nano videos when I was still doing it kind of like a post podcast format. There is one character that I am so proud of and as the, as the months have gone by, I am even more happy and proud of that character. Her, her name, ah, bear with me. Her name is Georgina Gachachiladze, or Gina for short. She. <laughs> She was born in Canada, but then she was raised in New York and she is from Georgian descent. Georgia, like the Republic of Georgia, the country Georgia, that's why her name, Gajajiladze, ends in this the termination. Yeah, yeah, that's Georgian. And her, her parents are Georgian, her siblings are Georgian. She's the only one who was like, oops, I was born outside of Georgia. Well. And that's why her name Georgina, so yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like sarcasm, okay. And this girl, she is one of my favorite characters, even though she is not a major character. I have to mention her in this project, in this video about my nano project, because she plays a major role in the second book, and like a lot. There's a lot going on around that character, you get to know her a lot deeper than in book one. And recently, this is something else I want to talk because I want to see more of this in AuthorTube. I really want to see all of you AuthorTubers from all over the place. And I want to hear more about how do you incorporate it in your culture if you are proud of your culture. Now, I am... Ghost! It's a ghost! <laughs> it's the wind. Come on. Anyway, I would like to say that. Now, if you are a writer like me, who was born in a kind of like in the wrong place and you don't want to talk about your culture, I respect that and I totally support it because I am another crazy who is more of a multicultural alien outsider and I would be very happy just saying I was born in low orbit in a laboratory in space, even though I wasn't. But I identify with that feeling. So. Anyway, if you are not that kind, I totally support you, but I also respect and admire and support the people who actually feel at home where they were born and they are proud of their culture and they are like happy where, where they are. I mean, it's good to see that too. Georgina is one of those. And recently I met someone out of the writing community. She is... Um, actually, she she writes or she doesn't. She wants to write. I am. It's just a friend of mine that I met in real life, and I was so surprised. I met her in the weirdest of circumstances, and she's from Georgia, Republic of Georgia. And when, actually, there were two of them. There were two Georgians. Then I, when I met one, and then I met the other. And when one of them said, "Well, I am. It's. I know it's a little bit strange, um, but I am from the." European Georgia, I was like, eh, Carvello. I was like, whoa! <laughs> I was really excited, precisely because I am writing about Georgina. So I immediately told her that I admire this culture and this country and like the music, 
the folk dances. Oh, if you haven't watched Georgian dance, please do me a favor and go watch it right away. After watching this video and after preparing for camp, please go watch Georgian dance. I'm gonna link something below. I am gonna link something below so you can watch it. Anyway, I wanna see more author tubers talking about characters from a specific culture, maybe in the real world, but something that they love. Even if it, it doesn't have to be your culture, I'm talking about Iceland and Finland and Georgia and Hungary and lots of places that are not my culture. And I am proud and I do my research and I admire them and I talk about it. So I would like to see more of that cultural aspect in author tube as well. If we are writers and we are planning on characters, culture, regardless of fantastic or sci-fi or like even if it's human or alien, it is a culture and I would love to see more of that in author too. So back to this theme about Georgina. I met these girls from Georgia and uh, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say names because I am not disclosing anybody's name unless it's a fictional character um, or like a famous celebrity or something. So I was talking with them and one of them read a piece from the second book that I'm working on uh, a piece where Georgina is dancing, she's like rehearsing for the folk dance that she likes to practice and all that stuff. And she read it, and she, first of all, she liked it very much, like she felt, she felt the rhythm of it all. And uh, there's a little bit of Gina's backstory in there as well. Because Tibor is like, whoa, I've never seen that before, what's that? And then Georgina goes and explains how Georgian dances work and how how some of the dances were created by legends and tradition and yeah all that thing and this girl in real life read that little piece like the, this passage where Gina is dancing and she was like she looked at me and she said what have you been researching because this is really accurate I mean you have never been to Georgia I don't believe you like have you, are you sure you didn't live there in a past life? <laughs> and I, she, she's convinced that if past life exists, then I have been to Georgia. She's convinced because I, I have a deep admiration for Georgia and I wanted to put that in a character. And apparently, so far, so far, so good. It worked. <laughs> and I'm delighted. So... Yeah, that's something I wanted to talk about because this trilogy features people from many different cultures and I think it is very nice for all of us to gather together as a community and not so much think about our differences but celebrate our unique something because everyone is unique in their own way just as much as I am an outsider alien I have something to share and so does have the people who are actually happy in their home place. Great. So yeah, Gina is one of my favorite characters. This, this is like revelation. It's not Tibor, it's not Lila, it's not... Well, I love them. I do love them. They are, of course, they are my main characters. I have to love them if I want to spend so much time with, the, with those two. But if there is one character one character that steals the show from time to time. That would be Gina, <clears throat> Georgina Gatsetiladze, and she's Georgian, and yeah. Those are like the happier aspects of this bleak trilogy about child abuse, neglect, isolation, suicide, bullying, and all that disaster. Um, and I just think it is kind of like real life. We have horrible things, we have beautiful things, we have fun things, we have multiple cultures. And I want to reflect all of that in my writing. So, that's what I have in mind for Camp Danoraimu. I am going to finish the book. I'm going to get out of this very awful scene so I can go on with the rest of the book and get to the resolution. So yeah, um, I'm excited, I am scared. And I hope uh, that now that I'm joining the cabin and now that I have a group of people who are also working hard on their projects, I also get the boost that I need to push through the summer and push through this depression, this seasonal depression that I have 
and that I'm trying my best to hide when I am in front of a camera. And I hope it works and I wish everyone good luck with your own NaNoWriMo project. Hey, please comment down below. What's your project? What are you working on? Like, you don't have to blurb or anything. Just let me know what you're working on. What are your struggles? All that stuff, because I still read and I reply, at, I reply to everything. So, yeah, comment below, like and subscribe and share and all that stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I hope my rambles have been interesting today. And see you next time. Bye.